Hey guys, it's Chris from CETA, and as you can see, 2021 Mach 1. Is it worth the price? You have a used Shelby GT350 now, you got the Performance Package Level 2, you got the standard GT with a bunch of upgrades. Is it worth the price? We're gonna talk about that and much more in this walk around and driving impressions video, so stay tuned. First off, the front fascia on the Mach 1 definitely stands apart from the rest of the Mustang lineup. Most notably, the grille with the faux fog light inserts, whatever you want to call it. They look to be removable. We were checking them out. Definitely like the look of this grille. And then you tie that in with the splitter down below, especially if you get the handling pack, you get an additional splitter under the chin spoiler. Again, it's just really aggressive. And I hate to use that word because I feel like we overuse that word, but it really does look good. One of the biggest talking points with the Mach 1 obviously is the hood. Ford decided to put a decal on there. I have a feeling it probably was something to do with EPA and emissions and including that shaker hood from the factory. Frankly, it doesn't need it. It's got all the ram air effect it needs through the grill, through that cold air intake box from the factory. And then on top of that, if you were to add our cold air intake, whether it's the closed lid or the open lid, you're really gonna be able to open it up and use that ram air effect. And if you have a Mach 1, Go ahead and remove this and see if you can kind of get some more ram air right into that intake. But again, if you're a purist and you have a Mach 1 and you really, really want that shaker hood, fret not, Classic Design Concepts has the option for you that we'll be selling here through Steeda for you to cut the hole in the hood. Yes, I said cut the hole and put that shaker hood right on top, just tying together that classic Mach 1 look. This car has the optional 19 inch wheels. There are three wheel options for the Mach 1. You have the base Mach 1 wheel, these wheels, then you have the handling package wheels, which definitely look the part. And with those sticky cup two tires, are gonna be able to handle great. Now, sorry, this car is a little dirty, but I do love the Mach 1 badging here. Uh, it's a little bit larger than you would get on the regular 5.0 badge. It's a little bit lower, but it really does fit the part. And I like the new revised logo that they've rolled out kind of has a more futuristic and modern look than the outgoing Mach 1 logo. Next up, I believe this is carbonized gray, I'm not 100% sure, but you have those gray accents on the mirror and the spoiler. Again, something that's unique for the Mach 1. Um, outside of that, rubber, I haven't talked about that. 255, 40, 19 in the front, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. And then you have the 275, 40, 19 in the rear. Again, the 4S as well. Handling package comes with those Cup 2 tires, which is a 305 in the front and a 315 in the rear to really help get that power to the ground. Moving on to the spoiler, this again has that carbonized gray satin matte look, which looks pretty aggressive, especially against the shadow black paint, just like the mirrors. Now, all the Mach 1s will get this spoiler. However, if you get the handling package, you're going to get the base GT500 or the 2019 plus GT350 spoiler with the gurney flap as well for that additional downforce to balance out the splitter up front. And again, sorry the car's a little dirty, we just finished raining here, but the Mach 1 badging in the middle, again, you know it's a Mach 1. I also like, again, a little touch, it's a smooth deck lid panel. Uh, they got rid of this in 2018, I believe it had something to do with some manufacturing issues along the way and making it absolutely smooth. That's why they included the line in it, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's what I heard. Uh, but we got the Mach 1 logo right here. It's nice and smooth, and it kind of ties everything well on the rear end of the car. Um, but aside from that, the rear diffuser. It's got the GT500 rear diffuser with those four and a half inch tips. The GT500 has the five inch tips, so they're a little bit smaller, but uh, love the way this look. And the best part is it's not only form, but function. Uh, the reason why this diffuser is on the car is because it directs air to that rear diff cooler to keep things cool when you're on track. Really like the exterior looks of the Mach 1, but I'm really excited to drive it, so let's hop in. 2021 Mach 1. Absolutely so excited to be behind the wheel of this thing. Just came out a couple months ago. Obviously, we've been hearing about the Mach 1 and all the rumors behind it for the past literally couple years. Um, a couple things, uh, the bullet engine, obviously, and powertrain. The unique thing about this Mach 1 is the fact that it has the 10R80. It's a revised 10R80 over the outgoing GT models. Um, it's got a newer torque converter in it, a different calibration, and just in taking it around in, uh, in preparation for this video, the 
10 speed feels so much smoother. And I'll be able to show you that here in a minute. But without further ado, let's get this thing rolling. First startup, it's got the cool startup screen, digital gauge cluster that we've been familiar with since the 2018 Mustang. Um, it's got the newest version of Sync that we've saw on the 2020 GT500. Um, outside of that, it feels relatively similar to a standard GT. Slightly bummed about that, but at the same time, it's just way more refined than your standard GT. GT350 is kind of towards that performance side of things, whereas the GT and the GT Performance Package 2 was more on the comfort side of things. Um, the Bullet and the Mach 1, they fall right in that like premium GT Grand Touring type level. The best part about this, it's got the takeaways from the GT350. It's got the trans cooler, the oil cooler, the rear, rear diff cooler, the um, TR3160 from the GT350 if you get the manual, the, the super smooth 10-speed automatic that's supposed to be quite a bit quicker than the standard GT. Um, Let's just get this thing rolling. I'm excited. Uh, we actually installed a couple parts in this car, most notably of which is our Resonator Delete H-Pipe. Definitely a big change. Uh, we'll have a video up on that on the channel as well, so be sure to check that out. Uh, but definitely a lot throatier, and frankly, the way it should have sounded rolling off the assembly line. Absolutely love it. So, start this thing in normal mode. Unfortunately, it's raining today, so... It's not exactly the most ideal conditions, but we'll take what we can get. This particular Mach 1 does have the optional wheels. Honestly, I think they look quite a bit better than the base model wheels, um, but nothing holds a candle to this handling pack. Super wide, sticky, Cup 2 tires. This 10 speed just sifts absolutely so smooth. It's not searching for a gear or anything like that. Um, I mean, granted, I'm in normal mode right now, but we'll kind of go through the modes here and see if it's any different than the regular uh, GTs, you know, with Magneride, as this does have Magneride standard. So you can get our Magneride Sports Springs to drop it. I think it's about an inch all the way around, or the um, Magneride Dual Rate Springs, where it'll lower it about half an inch, give or take but you get the best of both worlds when it comes to nice and smooth driving on the highway, but when you lean into it, you hit that secondary rate on those dual rate springs and it's just like no else. Absolutely love it. Swear that isn't a sales pitch. It felt awesome on the GT350 and I'm sure it feels even better on the Mach 1 considering that this is a more premium version. It's got so many nice touch points, the leather, um, the, uh, the leather seats, which are definitely um, probably actually real leather, not just the, the faux stuff you see on the, the base, the lower model Mustangs. Um, it does feel ultra smooth, something that uh, kind of, again, makes the car feel a little bit special. And you get this cool white line across the seat as well. Switch it into Sport Plus mode. Again, look at my body as I'm shifting here. These are 4,000 shifts. You barely even feel it. Definitely an improvement over the regular GT. I do hope that they roll out these changes to the 10R80 that they included for the Mach 1 and the 480 horsepower motor with the GT350 takeoffs and stuff like that for the regular GTs as well, because whatever they did, whether it's a calibration change, the upgraded torque converter, this thing feels smooth. Really wish it was dry today so we can do some uh, quarter mile or zero to 60 or something where we can just feel the sheer acceleration of this thing without it <laughs> spinning all over the place. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Got the windshield wipers on. Um, Outside of that, the interior, um, this one has the, uh, I guess, the technology driver assist package. I'm not sure what they call the package on the Mach 1s. But you got the rain sensing windshield wipers, you got the auto high beams, you got the lane keep assist and the adaptive cruise control. Again, all the creature comforts, not available for the 350, but you kind of get 
that premium luxury feel with that bump and power and the automatic that you were never able to get in the bullet. Switch the exhaust to track mode. A little bit deeper, you hear that H-pipe, that nice deep muscle car tone. The uh, digital gauge cluster is pretty much the same as the GT. Um, obviously you have the uh, startup screen which is different unique to the Mach 1 they have that different startup screen but um, track apps line lock you know everything you can expect acceleration timer brake performance but it does feel nice and you got that Mach 1 insignia on the on the dash panel on the passenger side you know this is uh, 1127 which is pretty cool you got the unique door sill plates again those nice little touches that definitely make this car feel more special again coming from a 350 this is a little bit more um, luxurious than I'm used to uh, the GT kind of fits the bill this is an upgraded GT more than it is a watered-down 350 um, but it does fit nicely in that in-between area between the 500 and the um, GT performance package. Do I wish it had a little bit more power? Yeah, of course. Why? I mean, you would say that for, even if you were talking about the GT 500. Yeah, of course we wanted to have more power. But adding, you know, a tune and intake, um, cat back exhaust, freeing up some uh, some power, some restriction definitely uh, going to be able to get a couple more horses out of it which is cool man i wish it wasn't raining you got the heated steering wheel now for the handling package cars it was kind of cool after the fact well i guess in the beginning they said okay it's a tr3160 that's what you're going to get with the handling package no automatics then there were people out there like hey camaro's got the automatic um, for all their track pack 1LE stuff or the Z01 1LE where you can get the 10 speed or the uh, the stick shift um, but Ford came out and said hey we're listening we're going to do the handling package with the 10R80 as well man am I excited to drive both of those stick and uh, automatic and see how they do perform on track um, historically the 18s uh, 18 to 21 GTs they, the 10 r 80s have a little bit of trouble on track once you start getting some heat in them uh, the coolers just aren't able to keep up but with the additional coolers that come on the Mach 1 should be able to beat on that car all day and not have any issues which is why they offered that 10 r 80 with the Mach 1 handling package rather um, talking about the exterior of the car absolutely love the front fascia how that's not only a uh, form, but also function. You can use, uh, and, and all those grills are being utilized for a purpose. It's not just aerodynamics or looks or anything like that. Aerodynamics obviously are a function side of it, but you have those coolers there and air needs to be able to get to those coolers. And with the factory GT fascia, they weren't able to really get the air that they required to cool down the oil, cool down the trans. Um, that's why the GT500 rear fascia is on here with the four and a half inch exhaust tips over the five inch you get with the 500. But that rear, that rear diffuser is not only, that well, it looks badass, but it's functional. It's functional. It's, it's funneling air to that rear axle uh, to keep things cool. tires on this same exact tires you get with the performance package GT Mustang the 275 40 19 in the back 255 40 19 in the front um, excited to hopefully get a Mach 1 here in house sooner that we can get some wheels on get some sticky rubber on and really see um, how this car takes takes to some mods you know everyone kind of gave it crap for being the the parts bin car and you know 
it's awesome. It's awesome. I absolutely love this car. Um, you know, everyone kind of balked a little bit about, no, it doesn't have a shaker hood. The decal looks awesome. Um, I don't care what you say, but if you buy a Mach 1 and you go, hey, I want the shaker hood, that's what the aftermarket's for. Classic design concepts will be coming out, if not already have coming out by the time you see this video, with the shaker hood available for the Mach 1. And that's if you have the <laughs> wherewithal to cut a big hole in your hood, may have a body shop to take care of that for you. But all in all, you'll be able to get that Mach 1 signature, Mach 1 look that came from the shaker hoods of the late 60s, early 70s, and the 0304 Mach 1. Um, if you so desire. Do I think it needs it? Eh, it could go either way. I like the way Ford designed it, but uh, yeah, sure. A nostalgia kind of throwback with the, with the shaker hood's pretty cool. I will say though, the H-pipe should be one of the first modifications you get if you pick up a Mach 1 or even a regular GT. H-pipe or X-pipe. H-Pipe, you get that deep muscle car sound, which fits the bill on the Mach 1. You obviously can get an X-Pipe 2, which gives you that more high-pitched, raspy, European-style sound. A um, little bit more torque down low with the H-Pipe, a little bit more horsepower up top with the X-Pipe. Um, but all in all, I mean, this thing, it feels good. I'm really, really excited to get behind the wheel of a handling package with those Cup 2 tires and see what it's capable of, especially in comparison to, you know, I'm sure you guys saw on our YouTube channel um, earlier last year where we took out a GT350R against a carbon fiber track pack GT500. Took it out on the autocross track. Obviously, the 500 really wasn't necessarily at home. Um, oops. transmission is shifting literally as smoothly as the dual clutch in the GT500. That's that's insane. And I'm, and that's not just like a fake reaction like I'm 100% serious. Um very very cool, very cool. But anyways, GT350R versus the 500 carbon fiber track pad. We took them out on the autocross track. Um 350R inched it out. Obviously, it was a little bit more at home on an autocross track versus the 760 horsepower in the GT500. But um, I am curious to see how many traits or qualities the, and personality the Mach 1 handling package has in comparison to the GT350R. 350R, it's all performance oriented. You know, people talk about the tram lining those cars have. You know, our two point G track brace does help a bit with the tram lining. It's not completely solved. It's not completely alleviated. Um, that's just an inherent characteristic that you're going to get with a 350 or 350R. But um, I hear through Steve Turner's article, he was able to go out west and drive the handling package car. And he said the tram lining is completely eliminated with pretty much the same width tires, front and rear. I believe it's a 305 Cup 2 up front and a 315 Cup 2 in the rear. Um, and the tram lining was eliminated. And they had some tweaks and changes to the steering rack and everything else. Just, again, refining this S550 further and further. Ford doesn't stop innovating. Ford doesn't stop tweaking things. As we talked about in the past with, you know, some of those rear bushings in the IRS, they're changing model year by model year. Um, it's, it's really cool to see that Ford doesn't just make the 2015 Mustang and stop there. They're continuing to innovate and tweak and modify to get it more and more closer to perfection, especially when you're talking about the price point. Speaking of the price point, $60,000 for this car. Is it worth it? Personally, for the fact that it is special and a Mach 1, I'd say it is. Obviously, there's a, the debate going back and forth between, you know, should I pick up a used GT350 over a Mach 1? Is it worth 
you know, that new car price for the Mach 1. Depends on which, which avenue you're looking to go to. If you want something that's more performance oriented, then the GT350 is the way to go. If you want something that has a lot of those performance attributes that you look for, but is refined and easy to drive and comfortable, then the Mach 1's probably the better choice for you. I would like to think of this as kind of a beefed up GT, you know? Um, something that has more power, it's got more capability, it's got the coolers, you can take it out on track. Um, probably a little bit more similar to a 1LE Camaro. However, the 1LEs, they're more performance focused. Probably more evenly matched to a GT350. But when it comes to the the overall performance and what you're sacrificing to get that performance, this Mach 1, especially with the handling package, I don't want to speak before I drive it, but I am sure it is one heck of a package um, that allows you to literally do everything and then enjoy a nice cruise down, uh, down the highway or a long road trip. You're not gonna have any issues. Again, I am excited to see what, how this feels on track or in an autocross setting. I'm sure it's no slouch even without the handling package just like a you know a regular performance package Mustang but then taken up a notch but and that's Sport Plus like my 18 shifted quite hard <laughs> quite hard in Sport Plus um, and that's buttery smooth buttery smooth And this Mach 1's in black. Um, probably not my first choice. Mostly because owning a black car is a lot of upkeep. The thing gets dirty if you just look at it. But uh, love the grabber yellow. Um, love the uh, twister orange, velocity blue. Some of those other colors that are available for this car. The fighter jet gray. Um, I kind of wish the fighter jet gray was offered with some other um, accent colors other than the orange, but all in all, it's a good looking package. And that front fascia looks mean. The, uh, the faux fog light covers, which you could probably take out, um, similar to like the Boss 302, um, and uh, you know, get funnel some more air into that intake or whatever. Let's try sport mode. We've got a traffic circle coming up. Paddle mode or paddle shifters are pretty responsive. Car feels pretty planted even in the wet. And this is in sport mode, isn't even in track, so Magna Ride's not super stiff. Just moderately stiff. like what they did 10 r 80 any of the major complaints you'd have about the 10 speed before they're gone now gone so let's try and see what this thing does zero to 60 i have no idea what to expect considering it's moderately damp here i fully expect for some um, interference with the trash control, but we'll see what you got, zero to 60. All right, press OK to start, accelerate to start. Put it in drag mode. Don't know how much that's gonna help, but <laughs> we'll see. All right, OK to start, accelerate. Point one. It's a 
little slippery. Definitely had to modulate the throttle. Trash control interfered. We'll try one more time. And we'll try something different. Putting it in normal mode, those ships are gonna be a little bit more lazy and not take away as much traction, hopefully in between shifts. Try it one more time, give it a little bit more torque off the line. Nine. See, definitely helped a bit, a little bit lazier in between those shifts. Um, but uh, all in all, not too bad. This definitely feels quite a bit more refined, but at the same time more capable than the Bullet or even the uh, GT Performance Package 2. I would say this is the best of both worlds with some GT 350 thrown at it, but you really can't go wrong. Um, this car is awesome. Ford did a great job, and we're even more excited to throw some Steeda parts at it to see what we can do about taking it to the absolute next level. So uh, that about wraps up the driving portion. 2021 Mach 1. Obviously, there was a lot to talk about in this video. Everything from the handling package, the optional wheels, the front fascia, the hood decal, whether or not you want to get a shaker hood from Classic Design Concepts, which we'll be selling here at Steeda. The rear diffuser, all the coolers off the 350. Again, a lot to talk about. It really depends on if it's worth the price to you. If you want a super refined car, but also have that performance capability that you got out of the GT350, this is the car to get. Ford did a great job of making this car feel special, not only on the inside, but especially on the out. You'll know a Mach 1's coming at you, especially with that front fascia and the rear diffuser as it flies by with those massive four and a half inch tips. You can expect to see a bunch of Mach 1 parts right here at Steeda.com, whether it's the dual rate springs or Magnaride sports springs, all the IRS components, the shaker hood from CDC, and a ton of other parts as well. Again, keep it right here at Steeda.com. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know your thoughts on the Mach 1. Is it worth the price? Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell so you get that notification right on your phone when the next Cheetah video drops. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.